Welcome to this episode of Morning Report of Emergency Medicine. I'm Alec Weir. You want to put the endocavitary probe where? This is a 22 year old male with no past medical history who presents with four days of fever and sore throat. Here are his vitals. His temperature is 39.2, heart rate of 110, blood pressure of 134 over 86, respiratory rate of 19, setting 100% on room air, and well, at least the fever is real. And you'll take a look in his mouth and this is what you see. You see this deviated uvula with this large area of swelling just next to his tonsil peritonsillar, if you will. This is a peritonsillar abscess. The, the diagnosis isn't hard. That's not the reason we're having this conversation. We're going to be talking about the incision and drainage of these peritonsillar abscesses. These rarely require antibiotics, and as always, you got to watch out for big red, the carotid. When aspirating a peritonsillar abscess, there are three poles. The superior pole, the middle pole, and the inferior pole. You always want to start with that superior pole as it's furthest away from the carotid. Now when I do these, if I'm doing it blind, I like to use a Mac 4 blade instead of a tongue depressor. It has a handle on it and it has a built-in light. There's tons of videos on YouTube about how to do this with a Mac blade. But we can also do it via ultrasound. And once I did this via ultrasound, I have never gone back. I'm sticking with the endocavitary probe. And you take the endocavitary probe, you place it directly onto the patient's peritonsillar abscess, obviously after they've gotten whatever sort of numbing medication you want so you don't accidentally gag them and have them vomit all over you. And this is what you're going to see. You're going to see your abscess here, and then right beneath it, Here's your carotid. Here's a video of our patient. Here's his abscess of the endocavitary probe. Here is his carotid. And you can see here as the needle enters the abscess, and I'm sorry I missed the very moment when the needle actually penetrates into that pocket of pus, but we have a post-drainage video, no remaining abscess. Quick case, take home points of peritonsillar abscess, not hard to diagnose. Couple of ways to take care of it. You gotta watch for that carotid, and that's why I use the ultrasound, because I can visualize that carotid artery as I'm doing my drainage. Now, if you wanna do it blind, there are lots of ways to do it, and plenty of videos on how to do that. I like the Mac blade with the spinal needle with the protective cover cut and an inch to help me did not hit that carotid. But since doing this ultrasound guided, I'm never going back. As always, you can follow me on Twitter at Weir underscore Alec or subscribe to this channel for more updates from Morning Report Emergency Medicine. Keep your eyes out for those interesting cases.